is coverage. How is their insurance working? How does their coverage, if they're switching a plan or if there is a change in their coverage, they're going to be concerned. Why? Because you want to have more covered instead of less covered when you're doing insurance. Mm -hmm. So that if so if we if they're going from something that's covering them with everything and then we have a plan that's takes two of those things off, they're not going to want to switch, of course. Right. Because that makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what kind of conversations are you guys having or will have uh, with people who are concerned about their coverage? What are some things that you want to mm -hmm. say to them? Explain to them thoroughly what they are being covered for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else do you think? Because when you start learning about Medicare plans, there's varying levels of coverage. Okay, there's a supplement and then there's the Advantage plan that you talked about. Totally different levels of coverage. Okay. I think we need to uncover a lot of their their, their medical needs. background. Yes. To start off with yeah. and that see what they have and what we're going to offer. Exactly yeah. right that you want to know what they currently have and how it's working for them, right? right? So a quick example, a Medicare Advantage plan typically is designed for healthy people. And we're just generalizing today. So when you learn about Advantage plans, you'll see, okay, they're $0 premiums, they're very inexpensive, they have a lot of perks, but they're designed for healthy people. Hmm. So when you start talking to them, and they start saying, oh yeah, I've had this Advantage plan, and I've had a couple health concerns that are coming up. I've been to the hospital, you know, they checked me for arrhythmia, and I don't have any heart arrhythmia, but I'm doing okay. You want to start saying to them, like, your coverage is not going to work for you right now. Your coverage right now, you're going to have to start paying a lot of co-pays, a lot of deductibles, if you have to go get heart surgery or quadruple bypass. You know, you're going to be extremely limited on your coverage. So when you're having these conversations with them, you're exactly right. You want to break down what their current coverage is. Because these clients, they're like, oh yeah, I have, I've had the plan for, this, years. for years. But they don't even know that it's not even helping them. Why is that? Because a lot of times people will just sell you something like we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. and then they, they don't know the information behind it, so it, yeah. they think they're getting covered, but in reality, they're not. Right. So. Here's, a great, here's a great statement that you'll hear. Uh, oh, yeah, I had my coverage for years, and it's been great. I haven't even had to use it. <laughs> it's like, how do you know it's working? <laughs> what? Right? How do you know if it's even working? Yeah. Yeah. I can vouch uh, on, on uh, as a Hispanic, most of my relatives are exactly that way. My aunt, my uncle, yeah. we, they've, including my mom, they've had Medicare for the longest time. They've never talked to a rep for, and she's uh, 82 years old. Yeah. Oh. So, but she, she, doesn't, she know, doesn't know. No, we just, you know, whenever I take her to a doctor, that's what it was. And I was like, mom, there's so many other things that we need to look at now. And uh, it kind of opened my eyes just by applying here. But, but in all honesty, our our family, our relatives, not all of them, mm -hmm. but for the most part, they signed it, they're done with it, they put it away, and I've got, I'm already taken care of. Right. It's just the mentality of what, what they've had yeah. before. Yeah. Kind of for like a little personal experience, I was in the hospital three weeks ago. Okay. And I thought my insurance covered a lot more than what it actually did, so now I have thousands of dollars hospital bills to start paying off. So. Yeah. It's And it sucks because yeah. you're like, I did not know the billing went this way. I thought this, yeah. Exactly. And that's, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, yeah, she, she's totally right because I, I have to have knee surgery and I thought my insurance covered and said, no, no, they did not. Yeah. So yeah. I'm still currently <laughs> waiting on the surgery. <laughs> yeah, you're limping around. Over. Hey, you, we have some canes if you yeah. need to borrow. <laughs> I should be good. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Good, but no, you guys are right. Like you guys are experiencing it personally. Yeah. Now imagine if you're 80 years old and something happens to you and you need some type of surgery, you know? Mm -hmm. And you'll start to learn a lot about um, when you're talking about people's health, uh, the correlation between their level of coverage to their level of health, it starts to decrease as they start to get sicker and sicker because they're like, oh no, now I gotta start dipping into my coverage. Now I gotta start using it. A classic example is people who need knee replacement surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, these people know when they're older that surgery is going to debilitate their body. They know it. Yeah. 
And so what they do is they, they take every precaution available to avoid surgery. And avoidance of surgery usually uh, predicates injections. I was gonna say it doesn't work. Yeah, so tell me that, <laughs> tell, me that. Tell, tell me why it doesn't work. So, because like now um, I, push mine off for so long now it's I have a worse condition there's a two and a half inch break so now I have to go through um, injections like you said in my knee yeah. plus the surgery so it it just makes it worse just yeah. having to try to like prolong it yeah. yeah yeah it's tough you know and that's that's the protocol with them is that oh I'll just keep getting injections until I have to inevitably get surgery yeah and we, and you have to empathize with them they're like oh I know why you don't want surgery because your body may not rehab as much you know right. so just another personal story my dad had colon cancer and he you know knows that he he has a history of cancer he goes to the proctologist like every year I'm like that's a little much but now I know why mm -hmm. so the first time he had it, it was stage one totally fine had the surgery just cut a polyp out of his colon it's fine he got it again the second time around same thing stage one caught a polyp, cut it out, he's still recovering. And this has been like six months. He's mm -hmm. still not 100%. Mm -hmm. And it's the surgery that just, you know, debilitates your body. Mm -hmm. And so the last thing that we want our clients to worry about or what you worrying about is, is my coverage gonna cover this? You know, when they have to inevitably go to surgery, are they gonna get covered? And that's a discussion that we have to have with them. So my next thing about coverage is this. When you're talking to somebody and they don't know what their coverage is, how do you think you would address that? In your own opinion. No training prior, just your own opinion. Um, explain to them, like from what the information that they gave you for their health needs, mm -hmm. explain to them what our policy would cover or mm -hmm. you know what plan we think would cover them mm -hmm. and why we feel it's a better policy. Yeah, yeah, that could work. What so you, you asked about like what they're already on? Yeah, you asked what like, you already asked what they're on. Yeah. So I would like I would kind of ask them and like see what they think like they're being covered for, and then take the things that they said and correct it in a way, mm -hmm. obviously a nice way, but right. And then just correct it and let them know what they're actually being covered for. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times these people are very reluctant. You know. I don't know if you've ever looked into like the Medicare industry, but like there are people that are calling these people all the time. Yeah. They are constantly calling them. And what happens is they'll go on a website or they'll go on Facebook and they'll say, oh, you know, I want some information. And then they're just absolutely bombarded, bombarded. with phone calls to the point where they're like, I made a mistake. And then they don't want to talk to anybody. And they don't <laughs> want to talk to anybody. <laughs> yeah. They don't want to talk to anybody. So Juan, I'll ask you, like, uh, it sounds like you have been working kind of with your mom in terms of coverage and stuff. You don't have to get, I mean, it's your personal story, but how has that been going in trying to help her understand? Uh, it's been a little bit rough. She had open heart surgery, um, and then uh, they did a stent, and then two valves that they had to replace, and then her heart was enlarged, so they had to reduce that as well. And the, the Medicare has helped quite a bit to be mm -hmm. honest with you because she's got the A and B part mm -hmm. and we don't have advantage or anything like that but there's other uh, areas that we can dip into to help help us out on it but mm -hmm. um, it, I don't know I, I've never thought about working at Medicare I, right. just ne I never have I really haven't and mm -hmm. and now that I started looking into this it just kind of opened my eyes and we've actually had more conversations about what she actually needs transportation all these other things that are out there that she's just not aware of mm -hmm. um, but we've done everything from she's on a wheelchair all the time but the injections on her knees they no longer work she needs two full knee replacements her bone density is not good she's 82 years old it's very hard but now she's more open to just venturing out and seeing what else is out there because man we get bombarded even at the house I mean, we get like eight calls a day. Yeah. And it's yeah. because my uncle's there and my aunt's there, and they're all like 70, 80 years old. I feel like I, I have a, yeah. a, 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 <laughs> a house full of elderly at, at my house, but that's what I have right now. Yeah. Three elderly in there that, that, uh, that, uh, that so are living there. you can feel there. those calls? Oh, man, we get tons of calls. Yeah. But, we, but um, and, and honestly, it's, it's opened our eyes. It, it, it's, it's, 
It's been an eye-opener for us. Yeah. But, yeah. And, and, and to a point where you were talking earlier, that we think we have the right coverage until you actually need to use it. And, yep. We, yep. and most people would say, I don't need it right now because I, I feel, I feel, feel fine. fine. Mm -hmm. But then when it happens, they're not prepared with the right coverage, and that's when it hurts the most. Yeah. It's tough being an insurance agent sometimes because your primary goal is to have those clients or, or potential clients understand that we are not salespeople. We are risk mitigators. All we want to do is mitigate the risk that is going to prevent you from having as many issues or as little as issues as you have when something occurs. 